Oh, hey there. It's me, Kayvon, by far the most famous and influential half-Persian comedian in the world. You may have never heard of me, but look at these dark circles. I work hard. It's time for the election. Full disclosure, I've never voted for Trump or Biden in my life, but I want to see who handled the pandemic best, and that's how I'm going to decide who to vote for. By the end of this video, you can too. The only way to compare the two is to meticulously go through what they were saying at the time. So here's my Corona timeline. Enjoy. Let's get ready to stumble. Let's start this thing off with a little history lesson. While many Americans were getting drunk and looking for that special someone to kiss, Taiwan sends a cryptic message to the WHO, World Health Organization, saying, we are seeing atypical pneumonia cases, linking this cluster to a Wuhan seafood market. January 14th. The WHO blindly accepts China's assertion without investigating themselves. They tweet, no human-to-human -human transmission of corona, nothing to worry about. But we're gonna have to rewind, stay with me now. We now learn that China knew of this virus before December, back in November. The first case traced back to November 17th, but you didn't hear about it until January. Bad China. Bad, bad China. We now know one of the best ways to contain a virus outbreak and save lives is do what they did in my hometown of Las Vegas. Stop people at checkpoints. Verify who is coming and going. And of course, seal up entryways. Only one candidate wanted to do that since 2016. You can make the argument that being tough on borders was a preliminary step that kept this virus from spiraling too far out of control. Of course, the Democrats fought him tooth and nail. They did not want any borders, no checkpoints, and abolish. The border patrol we'll do everything in our power to keep the infection and those carrying the infection from entering our country we have no choice so we got to be fair one point trump for his efforts he was called a hitler racist and a fascist racist for closing a border well what did biden have to say about that oh i voted for offense i voted like unlike most democrats and some of you won't like it i voted for 700 mile fence Mid-January, the WHO says no human-to-human -human transmission of virus, but on January 31st, Trump announced a ban on flights from mainland China anyways. But neither should we panic or fall back on xenophobia. This is no time for Donald Trump's record of hysteria xenophobia, hysterical xenophobia. I know when you go back to the beginning of this, the China ban was very heavily discussed. Were you involved in working with President Trump on deciding to ban flights from China? Yes, sir. I was. Do you agree with that decision? I do. Do you think that decision saved lives, Dr. Fauci? Yes, I do. One point Trump. What were the Democrats doing around that time? They were focused on an impeachment that never went through. In fact, Nancy Pelosi had an autograph signing party just to dance and brag about it. So banning flights versus a failed impeachment? Another point for Trump. February 3rd, the U.S. acts very early in announcing a public health emergency. One point Trump. February 4th, Trump warns of coronavirus in his State of the Union address, saying we need to work closely with China to figure out what is going on and protect Americans. Protecting Americans' health also means fighting infectious diseases with the Chinese government and working closely together on the coronavirus outbreak in China. My administration will take all necessary steps to safeguard our citizens from this threat. Nancy Pelosi might have heard that, but she was too busy waiting for her turn to rip up the notes that had the warning inside. In an extraordinary act of defiance, Nancy Pelosi made clear what she thought of the speech. Another point, Trump. February 5th, Trump is acquitted of impeachment, but how much of the administration's focus was put on the impeachment instead of working together on the pending coronavirus crisis? Democrats, you split the focus of the nation. You just lost a point you didn't have. You're negative one. And so far, we have lost nobody to coronavirus in the United States. Nobody. And it doesn't mean we won't. I think that's a problem that's going to go away. It's going to disappear. One day, it's like a miracle. It will disappear. Yes. And from our shores, we've, you know, it could get worse before it gets better. It could maybe go away. We'll see what happens. You have to be calm. Critics will say, take a point away from Trump. He said the virus will just go away. Mm. Fine. But he didn't say when. He just said eventually. Keep in mind, at this point, the CDC didn't even recommend masks. To add insult to injury, February 24th, Nancy Pelosi strikes again. She tells everyone to come on down to Chinatown. Chinatown, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, who represents San Francisco, toured the area this morning. She says there's no reason tourists or locals should be staying away. She's hugging, she's kissing, 
She's not social distancing, and she's doing everything short of inviting everyone to start Kung Fu fighting. Speaker Nancy Pelosi told me she came here to Chinatown to combat fear. That's what we're trying to do today is to say everything is fine here. Come, because precautions have been taken. The city is on top of the situation. The speaker was greeted by shop owners with open arms. I love it. I love it, Nancy. I love it. I'm so glad you came. Oh, you make my store safer. Everybody just come to she hugged friends, waved to onlookers, and downplayed the racism issue, saying she understands people are concerned about China. But that shouldn't be carried over to Chinatown in San Francisco. All I can say is, I'm here, we feel safe and sound. For setting a bad example for the rest of the world, Nancy Pelosi and the lack of social distancing cost her a point. Now here's where Trump might lose a point. February 28th, he called the coronavirus a hoax. And this is their new hoax. Watch the tape. I also created a White House virus task force. It's a big thing, a virus task force. Now the Democrats are politicizing the coronavirus. You know that, right? Coronavirus. They're politicizing it. We did one of the great jobs, you say, House President Trump doing. They go, oh, not good, not good. They have no clue. Hmm. When we dig deeper, we see Trump did not call the coronavirus a hoax. He said the Democrats politicizing it is their new hoax since the impeachment failed. Interesting. Why doesn't the news show us the whole clips? There are members of the press here who suck. Now, if you don't think politicizing the coronavirus in order to hurt the economy is a thing, well, then you don't know leftist. Roll the tape. This economy is going pretty well. We have to, what? You're, why, why is that funny? Hey, it is going well for now. For now, right. That's my question. Thank you. That's my question. <laughs> is, like, the, I feel like the bottom has to fall out at some point. And by the way, I'm hoping for it because I think one way you get rid of Trump is a crashing economy. Yeah. So please, bring on the recession. Yeah. Sorry if that hurts people, but it's either root for a recession or you lose your democracy. That's what we call saying the quiet part out loud. Bill Maher just tipped his hand. Were you paying attention? I was. Another big complaint of Trump is that he does not listen to the science. He does not follow the scientists or the experts. Well, let's hear what they were saying at the time. People should not be walking around with masks. You're sure of it? Because people are listening really no. closely to this. Right now, people should not be walking. There's no reason to be walking around with a mask. When you're in the middle of an outbreak, wearing a mask might make people feel a little bit better, and it might even block a, a droplet but it's not providing the perfect protection that people think that it is. And often, there are unintended consequences. People keep fiddling with the mask and they keep touching their face. And can you get some schmutz sort of staying inside there? Of course. I wanted to bring you some pretty stunning comments from Dr. Anthony Fauci, who basically just admitted why and how the government lied to us about the efficacy of wearing masks. What about months or so or two or three ago when people were saying, you don't really need to wear a mask? Well, the reason for that is that we were concerned, the public health community, and many people were saying this, were concerned that it was at a time when personal protective equipment, including the N95 masks and the surgical masks, were in very short supply. It is just admits hard. It a lot on live television. Yeah. Your credibility is lost because you've downplayed something. So the experts said we didn't need masks, and Trump wasn't too big on them either. So Trump listened to the experts. One point Trump. Here we are in March. We have 15 days to flatten the curve. How long did that last? Still going. In China, millions are quarantined. Is that where we're headed here in the United States? I don't imagine that the degree uh, of the draconian nature of what the Chinese did would ever be either feasible, applicable, doable, or whatever you want to call it in the United States. I don't think you could do that. Here's where Trump, listening to the experts, made the unprecedented decision to shut down the entire country. Never been done before. Listening to the experts, one point Trump. Now, obviously we live in a free country. Not everybody believed in the lockdown, so not everybody stayed indoors. But then again, Trump is not a fascist, a Hitler, or a Nazi, so he couldn't exactly roll tanks down the street, hold you at gunpoint, and make you get in your house. He let the states do it. 
States govern themselves. That means he's not a fascist. One point Trump. Advise no gatherings of more than 10 people for the next 15 days. You've said we can do anything for 15 days, but but give it to us straight. Isn't this going to be longer than 15 days? How long do you think people should expect to be at home, essentially? Well, what you're talking about is our 15 days to stop the spread initiative. We feel like if we can get America to all pitch in for the next 15 days, we can flatten the curve, which is a term that you've been hearing a lot, not overwhelm our health care systems. It will go away. Just stay calm. It will go away. We need a little separation until such time as this goes away. In fact, it was kind of beautiful. Americans came together to try to get the personal protection equipment needed to all the health care first responders. Remember that? I know I got down with PPE. You know me. We will lead by science. President Trump, listen to Dr. Fauci. Follow science, not your ego. Dr. Birx and I went in and formally made a recommendation to the president to actually have a, quote, shutdown in the sense of not really shutdown, but to really have strong mitigation. The president listened to the recommendation and went to the mitigation. The next time that I went with Dr. Birx into the president and said, 15 days are not enough. We need to go 30 days. At that time, the president went with the health recommendations. How would you describe the job President Trump is doing behind the scenes and in front of the cameras during these daily briefings that we're seeing? He's been so attentive to the scientific literature and the details and the data. And I think his his ability to analyze and integrate data that comes out of his long history in business has really been a real benefit during these discussions. First thing we have got to do, whether or not I'm president, is to shut this president up right now because he is undermining the doctors and the scientists who are trying to help the American people. Uh, the priority is life and safety and then the economy. How long are we going to have to live like this? What advice would you give them? Well, it depends. We do want to flatten the curve. We want to see that uh, curve start heading down in the other direction at a minimum. And uh, we really have to talk about areas of the country that have not been affected or certainly have had a very small effect. And we'll see. I certainly want to get it open as soon as possible. I don't want it to be long, but we also want it to open safe. Otherwise, what did we do? So could it be months? I, I hope not. I hope it's going to be sooner. I hope it disappears faster than that. I urge everyone to keep following our guidelines on social distancing, avoiding large gatherings and hand washing and all of the other things that everybody knows they're supposed to be doing. I said earlier today that I hope we can do this by Easter. I think that would be a great thing for our country, and we're all working very hard to make that a reality. We'll be meeting with a lot of people to see if it can be done. Here we are, March 24th. Watch Cuomo cry about how many ventilators he needs. 30 to 40,000. That's a lot. New York's governor says FEMA gave the state 400 ventilators. To that, he said this. What am I going to do with 400 ventilators when I need 30,000? You pick the 26,000 people who are going to die. If Governor Cuomo had said 30 to 40,000 ventilators is what he needed. He based that on uh, the experts that were advising him. What are you basing your assessment that he doesn't need that many on? Well, if you look, and I think you can ask uh, that question best of Deborah, but I think their estimates are high. Trump rejects the request based on his own intuition. People call him crazy, stupid, and an idiot for not listening to the science. Well, as luck would have it, Cuomo did not get his ventilators. Listen to what the experts and the science has to say. And doctors, it, they varied in how they approached it. My friend Michael, his doctor, didn't put him on a ventilator. And he said, if I put him on a ventilator, he's probably going to die. Right. Because he said his body's going to stop working because it's, it's going to let the ventilator do the breathing for him and it's going to give up. What Michael was talking about was how that is proven to be correct in New York and that some monstrous number like 80 percent of the people yeah. that put on ventilators wind up dying there was uh, someone on my team we were looking we were doing some research on this and i and i didn't sort of dive into the whole thing but he was he was telling me that um ventilators do actually like cause more damage to the lungs and like like he'd been reading some studies to like confirm that and he was pretty certain that that ventilators actually cause damage and actually could like induce damage another point trump now here's a fair criticism. Didn't Trump say one day this virus will just go away like a miracle? Well, what day did he say that would happen? I didn't say April. I didn't say April. I said it's going away, and it is going away. I can't hear you anymore. What's that?
Well, why was Trump so sure we would open by Easter? So the Easter goal stick, it seems like the t well, earlier we'll in the week see. you said we no. love Easter, but now it seems like it we'll could see. be longer. A lot of things can... Into a long weekend. Yeah. What do you tell those folks yeah. who think they're going to have to wait this out for a while? I tell them if it's your life, then it's your safety. And if we need more time, they're not going to have a problem waiting it out. Another point, Trump. President must have been doing good. Cuomo, Newsom, and governors all across the nation praised him for his response. Check it out. I spoke to the president this morning again. Uh, he is ready, willing, and able to help. I've been speaking with members of his staff. I said to the president, uh, who is a New Yorker, who I've known for many, many years, I want your help. Uh, and New Yorkers will do everything they can to be good partners. I think the president was 100 percent sincere in saying that he wanted to work together Point. Uh, in partnership in a spirit of cooperation. I can tell you the actions he has taken. Uh, his team has been on it. I know a team when they're on it and I know a team when they're not on it. His team is on it. They've been responsive late at night, early in the morning, uh, and they've thus far been doing everything that they can do. And I want to say thank you. And I want to say that I appreciate it. And they will have nothing but cooperation and partnership uh, from the state of New York. And uh, we're not Democrats and we're not Republicans. We are Americans at the end of the day. That's who we are. And that's who we are when we are at our best. I'd be lying to you to say that he hasn't been responsive to our needs. He has. And so as a question, uh, as, a, as a sort of an offer, offer of, of objectivity, I have to acknowledge that publicly. And the fact is, every time I've uh, called the president, he's quickly gotten on the line. Point. When we asked to get support for that mercy ship in Southern California, he was able to direct that in real time. Uh, we've got 2,000 of these field uh, medical sites uh, that are up, almost all operational now in the state uh, because of his support. And those are the facts. Uh, we always want more. I could criticize this or that. At the end of the day, we're just trying to focus on developing a relationship of trust uh, as a matter of course, because there's just too many Americans, 40 million uh, that live in this state that deserve us to get together and get along. Appreciate his nice words. I really do. I really appreciate it. It's, and the people with me appreciate it. Remember back when Trump vowed to bring big businesses and manufacturing to the United States? Well, in a little bit of luck mixed with some foresight, those companies were able to pivot and create PPE and ventilators for our nation in the time of crisis. You told Sean Hannity you didn't think that there was a need for 30 or 40,000 ventilators, yet today you basically federalized General Motors to produce tens of thousands. Well, what I, I think there's change? a very good chance we won't need that many. And I think, frankly, uh, there's a great chance that we're not going to need that many. But you know what? There are a lot of other people that are going to need them. We have countries all over the world that are friends of ours and we will help those countries. We're in a position to do things that other countries can't. And if we don't need them, John, that's okay, because we can help Italy and we can help uh, UK. Who would have guessed? One point Trump. Now, here's where Trump can actually lose a point. Remember when he did that press conference and he said to drink bleach and then inject Lysol into your veins? We all heard it. Watch the tape. Supposing we hit the body with a tremendous, uh, whether it's ultraviolet or just very powerful light. UV light is already used as a germ killer. It's what's behind the cleaning power of this hospital robot. But conventional UV light can penetrate and damage the skin and also cause cataracts. This type of UV light called far UVC can't get past the top layer of the skin. And I think you said that hasn't been checked, but you're gonna test it. And then I said, supposing you brought the light inside the body, you can, which you can do either through the skin or uh, in some other way. And the treatment itself involves the application of colored light to the skin with an instrument that resembles a simple pen light. And I think you said you're going to test that too. Sounds interesting. We'll the right, folks who could. right, and then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or, or almost a cleaning? You know, what the thyroid is comprised of or should be comprised of? Iodine. It's an iodine sponge. Now, if you have iodine here, every 17 minutes, it goes through the filter and the iodine, you know what iodine does, right? It's disinfectant. I call it the chlorine of the swimming pool. It will disinfect your blood every 17 minutes. Because you see it gets on the lungs and it does a tremendous number of the lungs, so it'd be interesting to check that so that you're gonna have to use medical doctors with but it sounds it sounds interesting to me i hope people enjoy the sun and if it has an impact that's great they've looked at 
patients that have died and their vitamin D levels. And basically, like in the Philippines, you know, people that for like every standard deviation increase in vitamin D levels, serum vitamin D levels, the people are, were eightfold, eight times less likely to have a severe form of COVID-19. And they were 20 times less likely to have critical um, form of COVID-19. Whoa. Um, you know, 70 percent of the U.S. population has insufficient vitamin D levels. I would like you to speak to the medical doctors to see if there's any way that you can apply light and heat to cure, you know, if you could. And maybe you can, maybe you can't. Again, I say maybe you can, maybe you can't. I'm not a doctor. Hmm. I guess he didn't quite say that. Who thought he said bleach? Be this is the same that. man it's who all told set you, up. maybe you could inject some bleach in your arm and that would take care of it. Chris Cuomo's wife, Christina, who along with her husband and 14-year-old son contracted COVID-19, says she's been taking bleach baths. She says it's part of the Cuomo's Corona protocol. Christina Cuomo says that she adds a half a cup of Clorox to her bath water. By May, Governor Cuomo received the naval hospital he asked for, as well as thousands of ventilators, which he didn't end up needing, just as Trump predicted. Another point, Trump. And in June, in a full 180 reversal, Democrats decide social distancing isn't that necessary because as long as you're burning, looting, murdering, or rioting in a peaceful protest, all bets are off. Join hands. Get together. With me. July 7th, Trump pulls out of the WHO. He no longer wants to fund something he does not believe in. He feels the WHO mishandled the virus, left him with the bag. Now, we don't want to be too hard on anybody because we were in what was called the fog of war. This was going day to day. We're looking at it in hindsight, so we know what was the best idea now. What we do know for sure is this was never acceptable. Take a look. This week, Governor Newsom ordered closures in 19 counties that have been on the state's watch list for COVID-19, including Kern County. But some have been asking, why is the winery founded by the governor still open? Well, some background. In the 1990s, Gavin Newsom co-founded the Plump Jack Group, which operates wineries in Napa. Plump Jack is open and accepting reservations for tastings. This man says he had a nasty encounter with CNN anchor Chris Cuomo over COVID-19 quarantine. The cyclist says it all started when he was out for a bike ride and noticed several people at this property that Chris Cuomo owns in the ritzy Hamptons. The cyclist says he stopped his bike about 100 feet away and that's when he recognized the CNN anchor. I said you're supposed to be quarantining. What are you doing out? What are you doing with all these people? You're not, oh, I said, you're not even practicing social distancing. Whelan says Cuomo confronted him. And he, at that point, began to come closer. Who the hell are you? What do you know about this? What do you know about the rules? Whelan says he brought up Cuomo's brother, the governor of New York. I did tell him your brother is the coronavirus czar. Why aren't you following his rules? And we've all heard that we should elect women. We need more women in office. Men screw everything up. Well... Let's see how the women did. Here's a hint, it wasn't much better. Mayor Lori Lightfoot has been adamant that people stay home and socially distance for weeks. But a social media post from the woman who cut her hair this weekend has some wondering if the mayor is saying one thing and doing another. In it, the stylist thanks the mayor for allowing her to cut her hair Sunday. That's yesterday. I am practicing social distancing. The woman who cut my hair had a mask, had gloves on. Um, so. We are, I'm practicing what I'm preaching and making sure I don't typically take pictures these days, um, uh, but we are trying to do everything we can to emphasize the messages around social distancing, washing your hands, staying at home. Um, but I, as an elected official in the public face of the city, um, need to make sure um, that I am out there and visible um, through this crisis. You know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a person who I take my personal hygiene very seriously. As I said, I felt like I needed to um, have a haircut. Mm. Nancy Pelosi is under fire today after surveillance video shows her at a hair salon getting a blowout and not wearing a face mask. The optics don't look good. No. There needs to be a no. whole lot of explanation. About 
it's terrible. Nancy Pelosi is a hypocrite. The most powerful woman in America can be seen with wet hair inside a salon in San Francisco. Problem is, under California COVID-19 regulations, clients cannot be serviced indoors. Governor Gretchen Whitmer says her husband tried to make a joke, but her critics are not laughing tonight. When the governor finally opened up business up north, she urged all of us downstate not to rush up there. But did her family do just the opposite? Is this a double standard when they asked to get out onto their lake? The governor says, it was all a misunderstanding. My husband made a failed attempt at humor last week. Knowing it wouldn't make a difference, he jokingly asked if marrying, if being married to me might move him up in the queue. A state rep from Antrim County where this happened says the governor waited too long to address this. You know, the cover up in many cases is by far worse than what the issue was. This could have been cleared up immediately. Public records show the governor and her husband, a dentist, Dr. Mark Mallory, own a home on the water in Antrim County, north of Traverse City. According to an online post, Dr. Mallory called the North Shore Dock Company. He wanted his boat in the water. He was told they were running three weeks late. No chance this is going to happen. Dr. Mallory reportedly replied, I am the husband to the governor. Will this make a difference? The owner wrote in his post online his own joke. It does make a difference. That would put you to the back of the line. Here we have Governor Whitmer's husband using the old Nelly defense from the hit song, It's Getting Hot in Her. That's where you say something that you want, but then you say, just kidding. Unless you want to do it. She needs to understand that she uh, maybe isn't as popular as, as some of the polls might say. Obviously, with the motorized boating prohibition in our early days of COVID-19. What? He thought it might get a laugh. I'm just kidding like Jason. Uh, it didn't. Unless you're going to do it. He was a living saint, um, and now he will be obviously among our most honored ancestors. You know, I would um, sit and talk with John, and he was, he was, you know, the quiet conversations that we would have. Um, this is where things get interesting. Trump gets Corona. He loses a point for that. But then he beats Corona, gets the point right back. One thing with me, the nice part. I went through it. Now they say I'm immune. I can feel, I feel so powerful. I'll walk into that audience. I'll walk in there. I'll kiss everyone in that audience. I'll kiss the guys and the beautiful women and the, everybody. I'll just give you a big fat kiss. No, but there is something nice. I don't have to be locked up in my basement, and I wouldn't allow that to happen anyway. I wouldn't allow it to happen. But it does give you a good, uh, a good feeling when you can beat something, and now they say you're immune. I don't know for how long. Some people say for life. Some people say for four months. Bring us up to speed on what the president and his doctors are saying about his health right now. Yeah, well, President Trump has been uh, sh making some pretty misleading statements uh, about his health, including claiming that he is now immune from this uh, coronavirus which the CDC warns people who have recovered from the virus not to assume. If he means that he's been infected and having been infected and recovered, that he will not get infected again, that's true. So technically speaking, the fact that he has recovered from an immunological standpoint, he has an immune response in him that very likely would protect him from being reinfected. And listening to the scientist, we find out the survival rate, pretty good. So to recap, if we think about it, things were going crazy. News was coming to us daily. Did Trump listen to the experts, according to all the videos and all the testimony he did? Did Trump adjust as they adjusted? Yes, he did. Did Democrats come out with flying colors, just showing us that they had the right path the whole time? <laughs> Absolutely not. In fact, they did much worse. And more importantly, did Trump act like a fascist Nazi dictator and lock everyone up and hold guns to their heads to force the quarantine? Not at all. In fact, he let each governor run their own state and choose how they wanted to deal with the coronavirus, for better or worse. In Seattle, they lost control of their town, the CHOP district had two people murdered, women groped, and businesses suffered. Portland was out of control for 90 days. Baltimore, Chicago, all Democrat-run cities did not fare any better. In fact, if you look at the death rates, four Democrat states made up the bulk of all the deaths from coronavirus so far. Well, that just about settles it. By my calculations, the final tally was infinity to negative 10. So if your idea is to vote for Biden because he's going to save you and he would have handled it so much better. Well, now we have over 120 million dead from COVID. You know, we have to come together. That's why I'm running. 
I'm running as a proud Democrat for the Senate. Very willing to let the American public judge my physical and mental fil- my physical as well as my mental fil- fitness. I've got some advice for you. It's best you stay locked in a bubble with plastic around your doors and do not vote November 3rd. Just stay home where it's safe and don't even mail in a ballot. Don't lick a stamp. Don't touch an envelope. All of those things have corona on them. Celebrities, basketball players, pop stars, they will tell you on Instagram that you need to vote. I'm naked. I am completely butt ass naked. I'm naked. I'm like naked. There isn't a man behind me. But I'm here to offer you a safer path. Stay locked up and do not vote. You have a right to. You have a right to eat 20 Big Macs a day, but you should not do it. Similarly, you should not vote. The rest of us, I think are gonna go based off this video and pick the best candidate who handled it the best and who we think will handle the next four years even better. Thank you for watching. My name's Kayvon. You can argue about it in the comments. My other videos have millions of views. Subscribe on youtube.com slash Comedy. And more importantly, buy some merch online. I haven't worked in six months. We are family. Uh, come on, loot this target with me. Trump.